but I know that you guys are probably like you finding out that your boyfriend cheated on you with his best friend and they ended up she ended up getting pregnant that was horrible finding out that my boyfriend left me for a minor that he swore on my daughter that he wasn't with horrible but they had put a tracker on her car to see where she was going us walking in there together was like if Mariah Carey and Nicki Minaj were to like go out to dinner like it was <laughs> Back to my channel I welcome if you are new here if you are new my name is Dakota and here in this channel I do a little bit of everything included but not limited to true crime story times advice and lifestyle content so if that's something you're interested in or if you like what you see today please feel free to subscribe it is free don't forget to also turn your post notifications on by clicking that bell so you can see more of my face every single week if you are new to this channel it's your first time here today's video is going to be a continuation of the Adrian series if you're a little bit confused on what the heck the Adrian series is I have two other videos that I will link down below for you all you have to do is just scroll down and you'll see part one and part two of this three-part and continuing series but in a brief synopsis Adrian is the ex-boyfriend of mine who is a pathological liar and a narcissist there's just a lot of crazy things we lived together he cheated on me with a minor and then we got back together he cheated on me with another girl and got her pregnant it's just girl it's a whole mess and for you to understand this story time, like you have to go watch the other videos. It's like watching Vampire Diaries and missing two episodes and then trying to watch one and then wondering how the hell Elena got with Damon. Like how the fuck does that happen? If you want to be caught up to speed, you literally have to go watch these other videos. So please go ahead and do those. But if you are not new here, hey girl, what's up? Welcome back to story time. But first and foremost, I just want to thank you guys so freaking much for all of the support. We are almost at seven. 1,000 subscribers. We just hit 6,000 the other day. Thank you so much for 6,000 freaking subscribers. I have no words. Our family here on YouTube is growing so freaking fast and I am just so appreciative and grateful for literally all of you. So thank you so much for all you do for me, from all the kind messages to all the kind comments here on YouTube. I do try to get back to all of you guys. If you do DM me on Instagram, I do get back to you. So I'm starting a new series here on my channel called Ask Dakota, which is kind of what it sounds like. But essentially, you guys will send me in an email Tell me a little bit about a situation that you maybe want some insight or advice about and I will answer it here on a YouTube video in my series called Ask Dakota. I'll pick about five or six emails to go through and I will answer your advice on here. It will be completely anonymous. It's kind of like an Ask Abby column from like back in the day. So if you're interested in that, my email will be right here. It's just dakotacross94 at gmail.com. As per usual, grab your wine, grab your popcorn, grab your snacks, grab a notepad on what not to do with these boys. And let's just get right on to it. So I am pretty much just going to pick up right where we left off from the last story time. And that is going to be when I found out about Amanda being pregnant. My whole world just literally came down to a crash. And I could not believe the news that I was hearing. And I believed it, but I was just like in shock about how something that crazy could happen. How somebody could just lie so much. How somebody could just take advantage of me in every way shape and form and I literally was just like my head was literally spinning so as I said in the last story time I did try calling Adrian when I found out this news and he immediately was just like I don't have time for this and hung up on me so I texted him this big thing like I did I never told him that Amanda told me I just said that I had knowledge about how I found out that they hooked up while we were together and then I found out that you know she got pregnant and I know everything that you did with like calling the cops and you know saying that she was gonna hurt herself that way she had to go to the hospital that way she couldn't tell me and I was just like you're sick like you're sick I really cannot believe that you did this to me and like I just I, I can't believe how one human being could just lie so much and he essentially was like if you want to believe her, go ahead. If you want to believe her, go ahead. Go ahead. If you want to believe her, whatever, Dakota, I don't care. Which is like, like when somebody's so defensive that that's to the point where they can't even like stick up for themselves or say what actually happened. Like that's how you know you got caught. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how you know that you are a liar because he wasn't even trying to like say his side of the story or anything. He was just like, if you want to believe her, go ahead because like whatever, like go ahead, do what you want. You are you obviously made your choice already. T typical narcissist 
manipulator, all of the things, okay? He cut me off. Like, when I tell you he stopped answering my text messages, he wouldn't answer my calls because I knew what happened, but I just wanted to hear it from him. And I don't know why, as women, we do that. Like, you do not need closure. You don't need confirmation. Closure is a myth. Closure is because you want that person to still fight for you. It's not because you want actual closure from a freaking relationship. We just use that as an excuse to continue something that is bad for us and that should not be in our lives anymore. So I kept trying to call him. I kept trying to text him and he just wanted nothing to do with me. I was so upset and I just knew that I needed answers and I needed them now. So first thing that I did was I actually reached out to the October girl. If you have seen my stories before, you know that when me and Adrian were in a relationship, I ended up finding a message on Facebook. I talked about it in my first story time about, you know, dating a narcissistic and pathological liar, how when we were about to move in together, I was on my Facebook one day and I found a message from this girl from October talking about how essentially he was with me and her at the same time. Now, by this time, it was like May, June, and I just read the message. So I was just like, oh my goodness, like, what do I do? So I, something in the back of my mind just made me think of that message. And I was like, if I need answers, I need to start from scratch. So let me reach out to her and just see if maybe I can get a little bit of information because this, this will kind of help me put some puzzle pieces together. So I ended up messaging her, just basically saying, hey girl, like, I'm so sorry that I'm just getting back to you now. I'm just seeing this. Meanwhile, it wasn't my first time seeing it. I saw it in May, but I, you know, just wanted to, in a brief summary, say, I saw your message. Thank you so much for messaging me because not a lot of girls are like that, essentially, where they'll reach out to someone to let them know that they are being cheated on. So I was like, I appreciate you. I believe you. But I was just wondering if maybe we can talk a little bit more so I can get a little bit more of insight of what happened. I kind of told her... Me and Adrian just, just broke up. We went through this whole huge thing and I'm just, I'm really looking for answers right now. And she answered immediately and was like, here's my number, call me. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like I'm literally about to call this girl right now. Like what's going to happen? And I was so nervous. And I ended up calling her and she picked up the phone and she was like the sweetest girl to this day. We still talk and we're like friends. So like literally to this day, like she is the sweetest most pure, genuine girl I have ever spoken to in my entire life. And she basically told me everything that happened. So essentially what happened was me and Adrian met in May of 2015. So in May of 2015, we met, we started talking, we started hanging out, and then eventually we started to date. Now, I don't exactly remember the exact months that him and the October girl started to talk. However, I do know that they were talking pretty much the same time span that me and him were talking. So essentially he was talking to me and he was talking to the October girl at the same exact time. And the details that she told me really made my stomach turn because like I told you guys, this guy was pressuring me so much into having children. Um, he left his other fiance because she wasn't ready to have kids yet. And I think that he just saw me, you know, as a single mom and he saw me as an opportunity to fulfill that family desire with however what I did not know was at the same time when he was telling me all these things about how he wants a family and etc he was also telling the October girl the same thing she even told me that at one point he told her that if she were to ever get pregnant that he still wants her to go to school and he still wants her to fulfill all of these goals and desires that she has but and that he would stay home with the kids and He's telling her this while he's with me at the same time talking about our future together, talking about our future family, talking about what we're going to do. And he essentially was with us at the same time telling us the exact same things. And the thing to me that was so weird is that when me and Adrian first started dating, everything, like I said, was as perfect as perfect could be. He loved mom the crap out of me. He would treat me so amazing. And our communication was great. We would talk all day, every day. So it confused me how he had time not only to talk to me and to build up this like false reality in my head, but he also had the time to talk to this girl and tell her all the same things. And it's like, 
I just don't get like, so you were hanging out with me and her at the same exact time, but I was talking to you and with you constantly. So it's like, it just, it's crazy how guys can keep up with their lives because I could never, like I don't even remember what I had for dinner last night, let alone remembering to tell this girl one thing, this girl that thing. I have to hang out with you and make time for you, but I also have to do the same thing with you and I can't get you guys crossed. Like I could never. So I honestly have to just like, give props to Adrian because the mental capacity that it takes to do that is astonishing. Moving on, basically what happened was they were together, they were building up a future, they were, you know, they, they knew each other from high school, they knew each other from high school, and they kind of reconnected through just like social media, they started to hang out and started to kind of build towards something greater. They weren't in a relationship, but they were like talking, you know, they were dating and they were together for a little bit of time. And, you know, he was telling her all these amazing things. He was also like love bombing her and just being so sweet to her and all of that. And to the point where she thought that she was the only person that he was talking to, which me too, I thought I was the only person he was talking to as well. So I guess one night they were hanging out together and she was going through his phone and she saw that he was texting me and that he was calling me babe and that was enough for her to completely cut him off she just saw me she saw my name she ended up finding me on facebook and that's when she ended up messaging me telling me like hey girl i know that you're you know talking to oh my god i almost said his real name <laughs> i know that you're talking to adrian i just want to let you know that up until tonight i was too until i saw him calling you babe and like he's a piece of crap and basically like, he doesn't deserve either of us and you should basically leave um so that's when all of that happened now let me remind you when i first saw this message before i even reached out to her before we even moved in together i asked him do you know this girl how do you know her and were you talking to her? He told me that he did not know her. He said he's never talked to her. He's never hung out with her. That he thinks that they went to the same high school together, but he's not entirely sure. That's how much this kid lied. He literally was building a whole future fantasy with this girl on the side while me and him were together. But then when I confronted him about what she told me, he said he didn't know her. It's just the lies, like the lies need to stop. <laughs> so we basically talked and I basically said, yeah, you know, girl, like we moved in together. He cheated on me with a minor from his job. And then I didn't tell her the whole situation about Amanda because like I said, like that's not my story to tell, you know, um, it, it really isn't. So I told her, I just found out that he cheated on me again. And I can't go into too much detail, but let's just say it got really bad. And she was like, girl, you need to leave him behind like you need to leave him in 2016 like you just need to leave it behind because at this point it was 2017 so we met in 2015 he cheated on me with nikki remember the nikki his co-worker underage co-worker cheated on me with her then they broke up me and him got back together got through new year's got through january and then that's when he broke up with me and then shortly after you know remember he came over to my house to take care of me um because i was sick and then i was telling my friend about that and my friend had told me about the whole amanda situation so now we're in 2017. so she was telling me like girl leave him behind in 2016 let him stay there like he's oh, he's not a good person he's not a good person like i can just tell by you know talking to you that like you're a really good girl and you have a genuine soul and like somebody like that you're not going to get to where you need to be in life if you have him around you like he's not going to change and i just thanked her so much because from woman to woman to reach out to me and tell me these things that were happening but also to be so supportive because i'm sure in this process she got hurt too you know um so I just really thanked her and I was like, let's stay in contact. You know, I would love to like interact with you and talk to you. If you ever need anything, let me know and just thank you so much. So I thanked her and we got off the phone. Next, I needed to really meet up with Amanda and talk to her about everything that I found out, everything that happened, because I'm sure there was more to the story. So we decided that we were going to hang out. I was going to have her come over my house, which is actually this house I'm in right now. Um, this apartment is the apartment that me and Adrian got together. When me and Adrian broke up, I ended up staying in this apartment for two more years. And then my mom moved back from Florida and I gave it to her and I moved into another house. So this is my mom's current apartment. She still has it. So 
it's crazy because this is where I made my first YouTube video and the fact that I made my first YouTube video with the thought of like I really want this to work out and then like three years later this is my career is a full circle moment. I think the fact that I can also tell these Adrian stories in the place where they basically were created is even even better. It's just it's really cool. So I wanted to film here today to kind of bring in this full circle moment with you guys. But anyway, moving forward, decided Amanda was going to come over and she was going to tell me everything that happened. She was going to show me the text messages and the receipts that she had and that we were just going to basically put the puzzle pieces together. So this was a, I want to say it was either a Friday or a Saturday. Uh, Amanda had made her way over to my house. She walked in and we just started talking and talking for hours, just comparing notes, comparing nights and days and just things that were just starting to make a lot of sense just really started adding up. I was finally starting to cultivate all the puzzle pieces that were missing. So basically she sits down and she shows me all the text messages and I, when I say girl all the text messages I mean all of them and then she started showing me the messages of when she was late on her period and how she was telling him that there was a possibility that she was pregnant he was like no there's no way like there's no way at all like there's no possible way that you are and she just was like okay well like I may be and he just was being completely unsupportive just completely just not a good friend to her at all and then she showed me the text messages of the night where all that stuff happened where um, she wanted to tell me and she wanted to reach out to me and he went to her job and like called the cops and told them that she was hurting herself. That way she couldn't call me and reach out to me that whole night. It was just all the text messages of after she found out she was pregnant her basically saying that like I don't know what to do, like I don't know what where to go from here and just seeing the text messages of how horrible this boy was to her broke my I felt more sorry for her than I even felt for myself because he was just not supportive whatsoever like he automatically was like well you have to get rid of it like what do you mean like what do you what do you what are you talking about like there's no way you could have like this if you have this baby it's literally gonna ruin my life Dakota's never gonna talk to me again like what are you talking about there's no way that you can so literally while this man is coming to my house every single day laying in the same bed as me sleeping with me telling me he loves me telling me he can't wait for our future together he's on the side talking to Amanda telling her like how are we gonna cover this up this can't get out you can't keep the baby like I have I have my life with Dakota if, if you keep this baby it's gonna ruin it like literally talking to her as if she's like a peasant or something and it's just absolutely disgusting and at the end of the day when a woman gets pregnant it's her choice it's her choice if she wants to keep the baby that's her choice you made the grown man decision to lay down and have intercourse with no protection which is stupid of you anyway because you're already with somebody like what is wrong like he just I don't know I feel like Adrian almost felt as if he was untouchable in a sense. She's showing me all these messages and then she shows me the message that really just puts the nail in the coffin and breaks my heart for her. And it's him talking about how if she goes through with having this baby that he's going to not be around because he's going to hurt himself. And literally made her think like even one night he was just like you know what I can't do this anymore like I'm done like I just I, I'm done like I'm gonna go disappear like ma literally made her because they were in mid-sentence talking about it made her think that he was gonna go hurt himself because he did not want her to have this baby if you guys remember from my last story time I was talking about how during Christmas when I had tried to end things with him he threatened me to hurt himself as well so this kid is just like a habitual pathological manipulator and liar and my heart just literally went out to this girl because I could not believe that she had to deal with this from this this man it just and, and on top of it too they were friends for years so like this is like supposed to be like one of your best friends it's not just some random side girl you picked up off the street it's not like some random girl that you met at work like this was your best friend and on top of it too when he had called the um you know, the, like the cops on her saying that she was trying to hurt herself. An ambulance came and had to bring her to the hospital. He did not plan on helping her pay for that bill at all. And y'all know, in America, when you call for an ambulance, it's like over a thousand dollars. So he was leaving her with this huge bill and 
wasn't trying to help her out with like the baby or anything and basically told her like you need to like 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 no like if, if you end up having this kid like I'm not going to be here and like you know what you have to do so do it and like he just was like oh he was just being horrible to her and like my heart just literally just broke because how just like how hateful like how shallow of a human being do you have to be to treat somebody like that it just i'll never understand so i saw the evidence i saw the proof i saw literally everything and then she starts to get into more things that just were kind of left unanswered from me being in a relationship things that i had thought about but didn't really have confirmation on she was kind of there putting all the puzzle pieces together for me she ended up telling me that um i think i told you guys my first story time about how he told people how i made him homeless she said that when me and him had broken up that he went around telling everybody that I kicked him out of the house and I made him homeless. That never happened. Never once happened. Never kicked him out. Never made him homeless. He left on his own and wanted to go stay at his mommy's house. Never told him he had to leave. Never made him homeless. She told me that a lot of things about him and Nikki's relationship. Remember how I told you guys how he tried to downplay it and make it seem like they were never serious. They were never big. Um, they were never like as hyped up as I thought they were that was an absolute lie he told me that he never went to go visit her when she was in college how they had broken up over text how things just weren't working because they were just farther apart and she was changing in all actuality this is what really happened she had gone off to college in North Carolina and he I think maybe after a couple weeks flew out to go see her he owed me rent money he owed me money from the utilities and he owed me just a lot of money from the bills that we have accumulated here. And I ended up just taking care of all of it because I will never in my life beg a man for money. Like, no, I don't need you for that. It's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to help out, you know, help with rent with the person you're living with. But you know what? You don't want to take care of your responsibilities? Fine. I'll take care of it and I'll just, you know what? Your karma will come to you. <laughs> he had paid for a plane ticket to go and see Nikki in North Carolina at college. And when he went there, he told Amanda that he was gonna go apartment hunting. So he could move to North Carolina so him and Nikki didn't have to have a long distance relationship. But you weren't that serious and you never went to go see her. And there was one time that I looked back on, there was one time when we had gotten back together after him and Nikki broke up. He had a backpack in my house and he asked me to go grab it for him. So I went to go get his backpack and a piece of paper had fallen out. And I looked at it and it was a ticket to go see a football game for a college in North Carolina. So I looked at it and I just looked at him and I was like, what is this? And he's like, oh yeah, like I was going to go fly out and see her. And we were going to go to like this football game at her school, but I never ended up going. We broke up before then. So, I, but I had to keep the ticket, um, you know, because I was going to go there and I was going to use it. I was going to go see the football game with her, but I never ended up going. I just forgot to throw the ticket out. And I'm like, so you never went to the football game? And he's like, no, I never went to go even see her when she went off to college. So that just confirmed that that was a lie because I was like, why would you have the ticket then? That makes no sense. It was like a printed out ticket from online, but I'm like, why would it still be in your backpack? It's obvious that this backpack went with you to North Carolina and you just had it in there. Never threw it out. And this is one of the lies that I look back on and I'm probably the most sick about. I know that you guys are probably like you finding out that your boyfriend cheated on you with his best friend and they ended up she ended up getting pregnant. That was horrible. Finding out that my boyfriend left me for a minor that he swore on my daughter that he wasn't with. Horrible. But the worst lie of all that I had to confront Amanda on was this one time before we had even moved in together. We were dating, just got into a relationship, and it was during that time when he was with that friend group that I wasn't too particularly fond of. He told me one night that he couldn't come over. And I was like, what happened? And he's like, it's a really long story. I can't talk about it right now. There's a lot going on. I'll tell you later. And I was like, okay. He told me that Amanda had gotten kidnapped. I'm not joking. He said there was this group in this town that didn't like her and that she was getting out of her car and that they kidnapped her, threw her into a car, drove her around, beat her until she was bleeding 
and then dropped her back off and left. And that they had put a tracker on her car to see where she was going. Like literally he made up this, like he, he said that this whole elaborate story about how she had gotten kidnapped and I believed it. At first I was like, okay, no, that's weird. I was asking so many questions, but for every question he had an answer. And why would somebody make up that one of their friends got kidnapped? Like that's sick. So I ended up asking her, I'm like, listen, I just have to ask. I know it sounds weird. And if, it's, if it is true, then I'm sorry for saying it's weird. But did this happen? I told her everything and she literally looked at me and she was like, Dakota, I was never kidnapped. I know. Who would even do that? She was like, that never, we actually started laughing. It's not funny, but we started laughing because we're just like, she's like, Dakota, that never happened. That never happened. Like, I don't know what he was talking about. It must have been a night where maybe he wanted to like go somewhere or do something. And maybe he just made that excuse to not come to your house. I don't know. But like, that never happened. And that was probably the most twisted thing that he could do to make up. People literally are out here getting sex trafficked, getting kidnapped, getting all of these things and you're making it up about somebody like that was when i realized how like like twisted and just sick this individual was like just absolutely deranged so we just you know continue to talk continue to just compare notes and things and then we get to thinking about we should do something tonight we should go out we should just forget about all of this and we should go out, we should do our makeup, we should just go out and have fun. And I'm down. So I start doing my makeup, I start doing my hair, I get ready, I get dressed. And I see Amanda on her phone and she just has this little like devious grin on her face and I'm like, girl, don't do it, it's not worth it. She's like, I ain't gonna do it, girl, I was just thinking about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was just like, girl, what are you doing? Like, I just, you know that look when you're like, like, when your friend's like. <laughs> oh, that one? Like, when <laughs> there's just something going on in there and you don't know what it is. And you're like, girl, can you let me in on what's happening right now? She's like, I have a plan. And I'm like, what do you mean? And let me tell you, like I told you guys, Adrian had been ignoring me this whole entire time. He had not been talking to me, had not been answering my calls, anything. He basically just told me that if I wanted to believe Amanda, I could believe Amanda and basically like leave it at that. So we had not been speaking. So she was like, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna see him tonight. And I'm like, what are you talking about? We're gonna see him tonight. She's like, yeah, we're gonna see him and we're gonna confront him on what he did. And I was like, <sighs> I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. It doesn't, this doesn't seem smart. And she's like, just relax, let's go. Let's get in your car. Let's drive to Euphoria and I have a plan. And I'm like, okay. So we end up driving to Euphoria. We're listening to music, we're jamming. And I'm like, I, so I turn the music down. I'm like, Amanda, what's, you need to let me know. Like I can't be blindsided what's happening. And she goes, so this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna go to Euphoria and we're just gonna go. We're gonna have ourselves a hookah. We're gonna have ourselves a good time. And let me remind you guys, okay? Me and Amanda in the past used to not like each other, okay? Because we had just some stuff in the past that had happened and I, I really can't bring it up because if I did, then people would know who this is. But let's just say I didn't like her because she hung out with somebody that is not a good person in my life. Let's just say that, okay? So, and then her and Adrian were friends too, and I always felt like she kind of had like a little crush on him. And then I just, I don't know, I just, I wasn't fond of her, okay? And because I wasn't fond of her, she wasn't, she didn't have a problem with me, but it was one of those things where it's like, oh, well, she doesn't like me, I don't like her either. So people always thought that we did not like each other. And at this hookah bar, all of Adrian's friends went to, literally all of them. So us walking in there together, was like if Mariah Carey and Nicki Minaj were to like go out to dinner. Like it was heads like turned. Literally necks were broken, okay? So she's like, we're gonna go into Euphoria. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna smoke a hookah. I'm going to tell one of my friends to text Adrian and be like, yo, come meet me at Euphoria tonight. Let's hang out. But 
my friend's not actually going. He's not actually going to be there. So Adrian thinks that he's meeting somebody there, but they're actually not going. And he's going to walk in and see us and know that we know everything that he's done behind our backs. And we don't even have to say anything. Him seeing us is just going to be like enough to be like, yeah, we know we've talked. We're cool now. You're a terrible person. So like literally when I tell you my heart was in my butt, I was terrified. I just, I could not believe that this was actually happening. So we go, we park, we go into Euphoria. The minute we go in there, literally necks are broken. People are like, is that? No. Dakota and Amanda, they're hanging out. What? Like literally I'm telling you, it's like picture two people that can't stand each other walking into somewhere together. We had our arms linked and everything. We're like, hey, what's up? What's up guys? We're gonna have a good time tonight. So we sit down. And we smoke our hookah and I want to say maybe like 30 minutes passes we're just laughing about how everybody is like literally staring at us all the workers there are looking at us like we're not shit because they know that like you know they know that like Adrian's my ex and that Adrian and her were like friends but aren't friends anymore and they're just looking at us like we're crazy and we just don't care we had no shame we didn't care at all so 30 minutes passes by and we're just talking and I hear the door open. Every time the door opened, it made like this certain sound. And I just look over and I see Adrian walk in. And he's by himself. He's not with anybody. It's just him. And he goes over to the counter and he, you know, is talking to the guy. He's giving him dab, like, what's up? Cool. Goes over to his other friend, says what's up? Cool. And then literally it was like, <laughs> he literally goes that. And then he does this. And then he sees us and this boy looked like he saw a ghost in the flesh. Like Casper was right in front of him. His whole face turned pale and he like, like he stopped midway. Like he was literally in the middle of a conversation with somebody. He looked over and saw me and Amanda and he was like, oh hell no. Oh my god you guys it was the funniest thing I have ever seen in my whole entire life. I thought he was gonna leave. This boy doesn't. He just walks in, he goes and takes a spot somewhere, he orders a hookah and me and Amanda look at each other and we're just like it's time to go. And the best plot twist to this is I told you guys about my best friend Tori right? So my best friend Tori had a boyfriend. Let's just call him Emmanuel, right? So <laughs> um, for my first story time ever uh, about how my ex cheated on me, my daughter's father, um, every time I talk about my best friend's boyfriend at the time, I'm talking about Emmanuel. So he's been there from like day one, bitch, okay? He's been there from literally day one. He ends up walking in out of nowhere. And him and Tori were, had been, you know, they were broken up, whatever. But I had not seen Emmanuel in a long time. So he immediately, and he was friends with Amanda. So he immediately comes out to us. He's like, hey, what's up? Whatever. And we're just like, yeah, like, we're, we're, we're leaving. Like, we're actually about to get out of here right now. Like, this is kind of awkward. Like, you know, we had our little fun thing. Okay, cool. He saw us. Now let's go. So we end up walking out. I don't even look at Adrian. Like, I just walk. And like, that was my first time seeing him since this whole thing went down and it was just so weird so we ended up walking out and Emmanuel was like do you guys want to go to the strip club <laughs> and I'm like what and he's like yeah we're gonna go to the strip club do you want to come and I'm like I've never been to a strip club my whole entire life I don't know what goes down there I don't even think that I belong there like I just I'm scared so I'm just like you know what yeah why not let's go to the I was like let's go let's go to the strip club let's go and <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we got into the car and went to Catwalk in New Haven. Which literally I looked all right, so this place is just it's awful. It smells terrible, it's awful. There's like red drapes everywhere. Somebody literally left a review on their website and says this strip club looks like a funeral home. And I literally started dying because it does. It looks like one and it smells like one. It's just not the place to be. So we literally ended up going there. Me, Emmanuel, some of his friends, and Amanda, and we stayed for maybe like 30 minutes and I was just like, alright, you know what? I've had enough for the night. I've seen enough. I've done enough I've witnessed enough I'm gonna go home now like it's it, I'm done <laughs> I just want to take a few minutes and talk to you guys about a company that is very special to my heart and that is Rose Forever New York they were kind enough to send me this beautiful bouquet of baby blue flowers this is my absolute favorite color ever they smell absolutely amazing 
Rose Forever is a New York-based rose brand launched in 2019. It specializes in designing luxurious flower arrangements with hand-picked exquisite roses that last for a whole entire year. So these roses will last you for a whole entire year. They are so pretty. You don't have to worry about buying a flower arrangement, having it go bad in a few days. These are specially designed to stay in place and put for a whole entire year. And they are just so beautiful. They make a beautiful arrangement for if you want it as a decor item or as a special gift for a special someone. With Mother's Day coming around, I know that I would absolutely love it if I received this as a Mother's Day present. It really just lets somebody know that you are special, that they are thinking about you and it is absolutely beautiful. This is a great gift or just a great item to have in your house as a decor item or just something that you wanna look at every day that just makes you feel a little bit more luxurious. What says Rose Forever Apart is that they only use natural oils to preserve the roses and the bouquets are handcrafted by professional rose artists. The roses come in round and square shaped velvet boxes in three sizes, 9, 16, or 36 roses per box. You can pick whatever you want that suits your fancy. Rose Forever also has a bunch of different colors. They don't just do your standard colors. They have probably any color you could ever imagine, like gray, pink, yellow, white, your typical red, blue, anything that you really want, they can specifically design for you. They're very versatile, which is why I love this company so much. And what I love about them is that the colors are created through a natural process of pigmentation. So the colors are always looking nice and fresh and don't fade because of the process that they use to specially create these. If you would like one of these special flower arrangements from Rose Forever New York, all you have to do is go on their website. It will be linked down below. And they were kind enough to give me a discount code for you guys. So if you use code Dakota15, you can receive some money off of your order. So go ahead and buy your mother, your auntie, your grandma, your cousin, your kids, or just someone that you want to make feel special. One of these beautiful flower arrangements because you definitely will not regret it. And thank you so much to Rose Forever New York for being kind enough to send me this bouquet of roses. It really does make me feel happy and special to have this in my room every day. And I just really am so thankful for it. So thank you guys so much. Now let's continue on to the story time. So <laughs> we ended up going home. Amanda drops me back off at my house and I give her a hug and I'm just like, girl, thank you for everything. I was like, thank you for telling me everything. Thank you for just letting me know everything that happened because you didn't have to do that. You know, you're going through your own stuff. You don't have to, you didn't have to do that. And you did. And I just want to say like, you're a real one and like, thank you so much. And it's just so funny because like, since then, we really did not have not seen each other at all. But it just, I remember this day like it was literally yesterday. And it's just, the, the whole thing is just absolutely crazy to me. It was enough for me to feel good. It was enough for me to be like, you know what? I don't even have to say anything. I don't have to do anything. Um, because him seeing us together was enough. So it was, it was absolutely perfect. <laughs> Let's get into the aftermath of when he saw us at Euphoria. So that night... You know, it's crazy because I feel like, you know, when you don't talk to somebody and when you don't see them for a long time, it's very easy to say that you're over somebody, right? But then it's like the minute that you see them, it's like that all goes down the drain. Seeing somebody that you're still in love with gives you a whole different type of feeling rather than just thinking about them. And Adrian and I texted me and he's like, I just want to let you know that you looked absolutely beautiful tonight and that I'm really sorry for absolutely everything. And like, I don't deserve you essentially. Like I, I fucked up and I don't know you guys, this is something that I learned from being in a relationship with an abusive person and a narcissist is that you could have all of the information that you want. You could have the information that they're cheating on you. You can have the information that they've done the worst possible things to you, but until you're ready to actually do something with that information or until you reach that level of self-awareness and self-love to know like I don't have to stay in this. I'm better than this. I'm stronger than this. I'm a beautiful person. Anybody would be lucky to have me. Like I don't have to be here. I'm choosing to be here. Until you realize that the information is just that information. Signs, confirmation and information is nothing unless you act on it. Like what good are the what what good are the asking for the signs if you're not going to do anything, you know? And in my heart I was still in love with this man. After everything, 
I knew that he was a liar. I knew that there was something wrong, but after all the things he did to me, I still was so head over heels in love with him and I still wanted to be with him. And I don't know why I couldn't tell you, but it that that's just what it was. I could sit here and lie and say that was the last time I talked to him, that was the last time I saw him and be like, I was a strong woman and I walked out, but that's not what happened. And I'm here to tell the truth because I have nothing to hide. And I am a different woman present day, believe that. He kept calling me, he kept texting me, I was ignoring him. And I remember Amanda even saying like, I told her he texted me and she was like, you're going to go back to him now. And I was like, no, I'm not. And she's like, yeah, you are. And like, I just ended up ignoring him for a couple of days. And then one day I just couldn't do it anymore. I finally put up the phone and I was like, what? And he's like, listen, what you think you know is not the truth. This is what actually happened. Yes, I did hook up with her. Yes, it did happen. But I never got her pregnant. She's lying to you. He was like, I never got her pregnant. She's lying to you. Like, I'm telling you right now, just please let me come over and we can just talk about this face to face. Like, just please. Like, I, I want to tell you the truth. And I said, okay, because as much as I knew the truth already, I, I wanted, I hate even being that girl to be like, I wanted to hear what he had to say. No, you wanted to see him. Like, if there's ever, if you're ever in that situation where you're just like, I, just, I wanted to hear what he had to say. No, you just, you wanted to see him. You wanted to see him. And I did. And so he came over and we sat down and we talked and he basically told me, he admitted to hooking up with her, which that alone is bad enough because were we in an official relationship? No, but we were together. You're here every single day. You're at my house, you're sleeping the same bed as me, you're telling me you love me, you're talking about our future together, about how we're gonna get back together, and we're gonna get married and have kids. Like, it doesn't matter if there was an official boyfriend and girlfriend thing, we were still together. And he was like, I know that, I do know that, but I am just saying, at least you weren't in a relationship. And I'm like, no, no, that's bad enough that you even hooked up with her. That alone is enough just to dead you. But on top of it, the pregnancy, he's in Dakota, there was no pregnancy, you don't understand, she's lying to you. She made me think too that she was pregnant as well and all of this stuff and he was like, she wasn't, she made it up and it was a lie and he, I knew he was lying, I knew he was lying but he just lied so good and he had such a manipulative like charm to him that just made you think that he was telling the truth and people like that are sick and very dangerous and if you're in a situation like that you need to get out because it's just not healthy and it's not good and I just I just the fact that he even hooked up with her I couldn't believe it and I remember he looked at me and he was like can I ask you something I said yeah and he's like, can you look at me in the eyes right now and promise me that you won't take me back? And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, don't take me back, Dakota. I've done enough to you. Like, don't, don't take me back. Please don't take me back. I don't deserve you. I have ruined so much for you. I've done so much for you, to you. Don't take me back. And I just sat there and I was just like, okay. I can't anyway because of all of this like I just I can't but I was like I hate even saying this out loud because it's so embarrassing <laughs> I said can I just have one last night with you one last night just can we just pretend like nothing ever happened just for one night and can I just have one last like a normal night with you. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Again, because I'm looking back and I'm just like, oh my god, girl, like I wish. Oh. I literally remember where I was. I was right here. I'm looking into the living room right now. And I was sitting on the floor and he was sitting on the couch. I wish I could like go back in that time as me present day and go over to that girl and be like, girl, get up, let him leave, and get on with your life. Um, I don't know, I guess I just wanted one last good memory of a, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. But he said yes, 
and we did. We had one last normal night where we just acted like nothing ever happened. And we had some laughs and we had some reminiscing times and it was like nothing ever happened. And I just was thinking to myself, like, why can't it go back to this? Why can't it just be like this? Like, I love this person so much, so much. I would give anything to them. And that was the problem is that I loved this person more than I loved myself. I was willing to give this person more of me than I was willing to give to me. And when you love somebody so much to the point where you love them more than you love yourself or more than your own well-being, that's a very dangerous gamble that you're playing because you should always come first before anything. And that was the problem is I, I loved you more than I loved myself. I loved your presence, your aroma, your touch, your charisma more than I loved my sanity. And that was where I went wrong. So the next day he leaves and we just had this like really long hug and he's just was apologizing to me. He's like, I can't believe I messed this up with you. I can't believe I messed up like one of the best things that's ever happened to me and I'll never be able to forgive myself and I'm so sorry. And he leaves. That was February, beginning of February. So a few weeks goes by, my birthday comes up. And he texts me this this long thing about how, you know, he wants to wish me happy birthday. He loves me so much and that he's so sorry for everything he did to me and that he's going to vow for the next year to work on himself, get himself in therapy, do everything he has to do, and that when he's done with that, and if I'm still single, that he wants to prove to me that he could be the man that I need him to be. And that he's going to be a, make himself into the man that I deserve. And I read that, and I'm just like, this is why I can't move on. Because every time I try to, you do something like this that keeps me gravitated towards you. It's like I'm literally like signing a contract for something that I don't even have. It's like when you sign a contract for a car, but then you never actually get the car from the dealership, you know? It's like, I have this soul tie to you, but you're not mine, and I'm not yours. But I'm supposed to just sit around here and wait. Because if I do try to get in a relationship with somebody, I'm still in love with you. And if I do try to heal, you're still texting me, telling me all these empty promises, and it just is so hard. And and I remember, I want to say it was maybe like a couple weeks later, Aubrey's birthday comes and goes, and me and him kind of start talking again. And we just start texting, and we just start reminiscing on old days and things like that it's just that this happened like clockwork every single time we would text we would fall back into like you know talking about the old days and getting back into our routine of how we talked to each other and how we cared for one another and then we'd hang out again and then you know we would like sleep together or we would go and do things and then we'd be like establishing this relationship again but then he didn't want to be in a relationship and it was just this, this continuous vicious cycle which is essentially what happened was he started to come over again, started to hang out with me again, and I started to fall deeper and deeper in love with him. Even knowing all of the horrible stuff he's done to me, I still thought he could change. And I had all the knowledge. I had in my head everything that he did to me, but I wasn't ready to let go of him just yet. And I remember, I was like, after everything that we've been through, after everything you've done to me, you should be happy that I'm even entertaining the idea of you being in my life right now. You should be begging me on my hand, on your hands and feet for a relationship with me. But he never wanted one. He'd say, no, we're not ready. No, I did all this stuff to you. I have to work on myself, X, Y, and Z. So I remember there was one night where he was supposed to come over. He was at the hookah bar. And he texted me and he said, hey, I want to come over and see you. But I won't be able to get there till like midnight. And I just sat there and I'm like, is that all I am to this kid? Is just someone that he can come and see after he's done doing what he has to do with his friends and going out? Am I just somebody that is here? Am I just such a constant and you just know that I'm going to be here? Therefore, 
that's just what you use me as is like because you know I'm gonna take you back because you know that I love you. I remember I was just sitting there and I was on my balcony and I was looking up into the sky and there were so many stars out that night and there was a moon and it, it was a full moon and it was just so big and I just started having flashbacks of everything this kid's done to me from me catching him with other girls to the Amanda thing to the Nikki thing to the October girl thing to the pregnancy to the lies the manipulation and just the stress of me always trying to be in this kid's life when with the best and pure intentions and I never got the same back and I remember I was just looking up into the sky and I was just like I was talking to myself I said Dakota are you happy like genuinely in your life right now are you happy and I said no I'm not and I said if this was your life five years from now would you be okay with this and I said no I wouldn't be I would be miserable and literally just like that, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was God, the universe, my ancestors, my spirit guides, or me just coming into my power. But I finally took a deep breath and I just looked within and I was just so connected to the universe. And I just said, I need to let this go. Because if I don't let this go, something bad is going to happen. I'm in so much distress. I am so disheveled. I am just a mess right now. My life is in, freaking is insane. Like everything else besides my relationship and my life was going great. I had my own apartment. I had my own car. I had great friends. I had a good job. I had my daughter. But like it did none of that matter because one person in your life that is so bad for you can so quickly mess that up. And I remember I just, I looked into the sky and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I have to let him go. And I messaged him this long thing and I said, do you love me? And he said, yes, of course I love you. I said, do you want to be with me? He said, yes. I said, okay, so then let's get into a relationship. If you want to be with me and you love me, let's get into a relationship and let's work towards it. And I told myself in my head, I said, if he tells me that he's not ready, that's my sign. Because if you're not ready now, you're never going to be ready, right? Men go after what they want. They don't leave you for afterwards. And as per usual, like clockwork, it was the same exact answer that he is not ready yet, that we're not ready yet, that he has things that he needs to work on, that it's just not the right timing. And I remember there was this girl I followed on social media and her name is uh, Leticia Marie Gardner. She's like a fitness influencer, but she's very influential she was a single mom um now she's married and she's you know found herself through just god in the universe and she's someone i really look up to as a woman and i remember i was like this is such a long shot but i need advice from somebody who's been in my situation before so i reached out to her i told her everything that was going on and she had like thousands and thousands of followers they, i think at the time she probably had like thirty thousand. so i was like she's probably not going to read my message like she probably gets thousands of these per day. Like, there's no way she's ever going to see mine. I sent her everything that was going on. I basically just essentially said, what do you think I should do? Like, I know it's time for me to leave, but I'm scared. Like, I love this person so much. I don't know what's going to happen. And she gave me a piece of advice that will always stick with me. And she said, at this age, sometimes this is just how men are. When they get into like their mid to late 20s, people can change. They can. But it takes a long time. It takes a certain level of accountability. It takes a certain level of wanting to work on yourself and get past these things that make you act the way you do. But at a certain age, that's just how some people are. And she said, you have to ask yourself if this is a relationship that you want for you or that God wants for you. And those words really just marinated with me i don't know what it was but they really just like stuck with me and soaked into me and it just goes to show that there's times where we're with somebody and we think that this person is the right person for us and we think like this is the love of my life this is who i'm supposed to be with i mean i love them so much obviously because i have all these feelings towards them this is the person i'm supposed to be with but we're not realizing that sometimes that's our ego speaking and our ego wants this relationship because it fuels these things that we need to get past but it keeps us stagnant 
it keeps us from growing it keeps us from reaching the potential that we need to reach and so that's why our ego basically like wants it to stick around but in actuality our highest self knows that this relationship is not good for us it knows that we can get better that we can do better we can achieve better when she said you have to ask yourself is this a relationship that you want for you or that god wants for you i just i, I sat there and i was like this is not the relationship i'm supposed to be in when a relationship comes from god or the universe there's no confusion Every relationship has its hard times, every relationship goes through its ups and downs, but when a relationship is equally yoked and it's anointed, there's no confusion. There's no guessing, there's no wondering if this person wants you or wondering if this person is going to stay or wondering if this person is going to cheat or mess up, like that confusion is not there. They, 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 get, they give you stability, they give you happiness, they give you hope and I just sat there and I was like, I, I can't. I can't, I'm tired, I can't do it anymore. I've done everything I can to make this relationship work. It's not working for a reason. And so I sat there, I took out my phone, and like I said, messaged him, told him, if you love me, then let's work on this. He said he wasn't ready. And I said, I have to let you go. But most importantly, you have to let me let you go. I can't do this anymore. I'm hurting. I'm in pain. I'm killing myself. Literally, like, like this relationship is slowly killing me. I can't do it anymore. And I told myself, I'll always love you. You'll always have a special place in my heart. But I have to remove myself from this. Because it's literally killing me every single day. And I, I have to go. I'm sorry. I can't do it anymore. I wish you the best. I hope that you have a great life, but you've done too much. You've done too much and I just, I can't, I can't do it. I'm done. And it was in that moment that I realized had I done this months ago, wouldn't have meant anything. And I'm going to tell you why. When you are ready to leave, you are ready to leave. When you're not ready to leave, you're not ready. And if I had left months ago, he would have done the same thing that he always does. He would have tried to come back and I would have let him back. So I stopped, first of all, blaming myself. Because a lot of you asked me, like, how did you get out of this relationship? How did you realize it was time? Advice to move on. I'm going to do a whole separate video on that. But here's the thing. When you're in a relationship with somebody who is abusive, who's narcissistic, who's manipulative, or just in any way, shape, or form hurts you or makes you feel like this small, they do that for a reason. It's because they need you for supply. They want to make you feel like you need them. They don't need you. You need them. Without them, who are you? Without them, there's no identity. What they do is they strip you of your identity. They remove you from your friends. They remove you from your family. They start ridiculing and making fun of like the things that you like to do. That way you don't have a passion anymore. They completely strip you away from everything and make you feel like your identity is solely infiltrated through them which is not true and they do that for a reason because they're insecure and they cannot be on their own so they have to make you feel like you need them like they need to feel needed you know and that's what an abusive and a manipulative person does and they make you feel like you can't leave the relationship because who are you outside of the relationship and yes things may be bad you may be hurting but it would hurt more to be without them than to be with them that's what they make you feel and that's not true so first and foremost i had to realize that everything in my head that i thought i knew about this person and about relationships wasn't true and i had to completely like a, like a like a bad virus on a computer deprogram and just completely cleanse my mind and know that this is not how relationships should be and everything that i thought that i knew about healthy relationships is this isn't it so i first had to completely just cleanse my mind and then i had to stop blaming myself because i kept blaming myself why don't i put up with this for so long why is this person treating me this way am i the reason why they're acting like this and that's another thing that abusers like to do is they like to make you think well i've never acted this way with anybody i only act this way with you or you make me crazy or you make me act this way they place blame on you to deflect blame off their self so 
I had to stop blaming myself. I had to stop blaming anything, period. I had to stop feeling sorry for myself and being like, why did God allow this relationship into my life? Why this? Why that? I had to stop blaming. I had to completely unprogram my subconscious mind and stop blaming myself. And then I had to heal, which means that no, I wasn't going on Tinder dates. No, I wasn't meeting up with guys. No, I wasn't getting under somebody else to get over the past one because that's toxic. Um, I was not doing the things that you typically see people doing to get over other people. I was alone. I was by myself. I had to sit with myself and figure out why I put up with it for so long. I had to take accountability. As horrible as Adrian was and as ruthless as he was to me, I had to take accountability for the fact that I enabled it because I could have left so many times and I didn't because I love them so much. But the final thing I realized was that I was not taking Adrian for how he was. I was taking him for how he could be. I was falling for potential. I had rose colored glasses on and they were completely distorted. And I saw somebody for how I wanted to see them instead of how they actually were. I romanticized and glamorized somebody for their potential. And that is probably the one thing in life that will really keep you back is trying to say, well, this person could be this or, oh, this person was like this in the beginning. They could be like this again. I hate to tell you this, but a person in the beginning wasn't real. It wasn't. It was a mask and a facade they had on. And once they realized that they had you in a place where you were vulnerable, the veil was lifted and you saw who they actually were. That's how abusers are. That's how manipulative and narcissistic people are. They have this veil in front of them. They want to seem like the good guy. They want to seem like the smoother and the charmer and the finesser. They want to seem like they're the best thing since sliced bread. And then when that veil comes off, it's like it's who they actually are. But they don't release that veil until they know that they have you. It's a strategic, planned, and calculated game that they play. So if you're in a situation like this, please get out of it. Call a friend, call around your local town if you're with somebody that is not treating you right but you're scared to leave. Maybe you have kids with them or maybe you just don't have somewhere to go. There's churches that can help you out. There's local hotlines that could help you out. If you have any type of resources or whatever, drop them in the comments below so other women know that they can get out of this situation too because it is scary. I'm not saying it was easy and when you get out of a relationship with a narcissist, you withdraw. It's very much so like being addicted to a drug, right? Love is very addicting. So you get addicted to this person and the feeling they give you and then when they leave, you withdraw. And I had a very hard time getting over Adrian. It took me two years, two solid years to look back and not feel like I'm still in love with this person. I used to hate saying that because I felt like he had power over me, but I don't hate saying that anymore because I know that at the end of the day that I love this person with every fiber in my body and I tried so hard to give them a good life and to love them. And my intentions were always pure. So my conscience is clear and I'm good on this end. Whatever he has done to me, because a lot of people say things are like, I don't get how you're so chill about this. I don't get how you're so like, okay with the stuff he's done for you to you. Let me just explain that when I was younger, I used to be a very reactive person. I used to be a very angry, bitter, reactive teenager. Okay. <laughs> I had a lot of stuff I had to go through. Little Dakota was a firecracker. As I matured and got older and I had a daughter and I started to really get into my spiritual work and completely just put, you know, the universe and God in the center of my life, I realized that people do things because they're projecting. And once you realize in this world that everybody is projecting, you realize that you can't take things personal. You can't because everybody around you is projecting from their insecurities, from their past wounds, from their current situations. Everybody is projecting, right? And at the end of the day, what Adrian has done is between him and God. Like, it's not between me. <laughs> it's just not. It's between him and the man upstairs. It's not between, I have nothing to do with it, okay? So what he's done, I could sit here, I could scream, I could break things, I could talk oh, so much shit, I could sit here and just be irate. But it's not gonna change the fact that he's done what he's done. I can't control him, I can't control what he's done, I can't control the past. What I can control is everything on my end. How I heal, how I move forward, how I be a good example for my daughter and how I make sure that this never happens again. Because now, 
I had the knowledge. You see, you can read about these things in textbooks. You can read about narcissists. You can read about all these red flags that people, you know, will portray, right? But until you've lived it, you truly never know. Living through a narcissistic relationship versus reading about it or watching videos about it are two completely different things. And I've lived through it and I'm grateful because I now know what to look out from look out for. I now know what I don't want in my life and what I do want in my life. And better yet, I know how to become the best woman possible to be the best example possible for my daughter. That way she does not ever have to go through what I've gone through. Like I like this saying, it says, um, it ran into my family until it ran into me. And a lot of the things that I have gone through as an adult, my mother has gone through as well. And so has her mother. And x y and z you know so on and so forth and i feel like it goes through the generations until it gets to the one person that is meant to break it that way my daughter can reap the results so i'm doing the work to break all of this okay all these generational curses all of this trauma that way my daughter can be the one that reaps the benefits because you reap what you sow in this life and you get what you put out there i want to end this video with saying this to all the parties that are involved to Nikki, to Amanda, to Adrian, to everybody that's possibly involved in this story, I wish you the best. I hope you've taken the time from all of this to heal, to grow, to take acknowledgement and accountability of the things that you've done and to move forward and be a better person because of that. That way you don't bleed on people who didn't cut you. So you don't hurt anybody else. And I truly hope that you're actually living in a state of truth and accountability and honesty to the point where you don't do the things that you once did because they're not okay but i do wish you all the best i wish you all the most success and happiness in, the, in life at the end of the day you get in life what you put out you can't be a shitty person and have an amazing life okay <laughs> like it doesn't work like that get in this life what you put out and you reap what you sow and on my end my conscience is clear and I'm good. I sleep great at night. I have a great life now. I'm very happy with where I'm at. I'm very happy with where I'm headed and where I'm going. I know who I am. I stand in my truth and I take accountability for anything that's ever happened in my life. And that's exactly why I tell these stories is because people have gone through stuff like this. Like no, like not everybody's life is perfect. Not everybody came from a two family home. Not everybody came from money. Not everybody came from like positivity and encouragement and enlightenment and if you did that's great i think that's amazing that's awesome but not everybody did and sometimes because you live in a life where you've been through some shit and other people around you haven't it makes you feel like an outcast or it makes you feel weird it makes you feel like you don't belong and then when you see somebody that's gone through the same thing as you it makes you feel not validated but it makes you feel understood Okay, and suffering is alleviated when we all realize that we're not going through it alone. So that's why I make my videos. That's why I do the things that I do. It's why I get in here and I'm vulnerable with you guys because transparency is where healing begins. Okay, transparency is literally the root of healing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I have so many other stories with Adrian. So if you guys want me to tell them, let me know. But essentially, this is the last story of me and Adrian of when we finally, finally broke up and I have not talked to him since. It's been three years, have not spoken to him, have not heard from him, don't know what he's doing, don't care to know what he's doing. Um, and this was basically the end of us being together and when I finally put my foot down, when I finally left. But there's so many other stories that I have of when we were in a relationship, just of me finding things out and him lying to me. So if you guys ever want me to tell any of those and continue the Adrian saga, just let me know. Don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up. It really helps me out and gets me out there in the algorithm. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below if you've ever been through a situation like this or um, if you just want to leave me a nice comment, I always like looking at them. Also, don't forget to subscribe. It is free and it really helps me out. Turn your post notifications on because I post every Thursday and Sunday. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I go live on Instagram every single Thursday. Um, it's a really good opportunity to interact with you guys and to get to know you guys and for you guys to get to know me. We have so much fun. If you ever have joined my lives, just go ahead and let them all know how much fun we have on there. And also last, don't forget to subscribe to my podcast, The Millennial Empath, we are on Spotify. Spotify, Google, Apple, iHeartRadio, 
literally Apple everywhere. Um, don't forget to subscribe to that. I'm actually doing two post notification shout out today is because I forgot that last video I didn't do one. I'm so sorry guys. So the first post notification shout out goes to Marissa Perez because I love this comment. It says this is better than any Netflix series. I'm so ready for all these stories girl. That literally made me laugh so much because I literally watch YouTube way more than I watch any TV. So I absolutely agree that YouTube is way better than any Netflix series. And my second shout out is going to go to Naomi. She says the queen always delivers and Naomi is always in my Instagram live. She's always encouraging me and being uplifting and we've talked on Instagram many times. So hey girl, thank you so much for all your support. If you want to be in the next post notification shout out, all you have to do is turn your post notifications on, leave a comment down below and then comment done. So that way I know that your post notifications are on. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today's story time. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.